behind me and it's messy, that's my life. Uh, the girls are sitting at the table eating an ice cream and the only place I can stand has this messy table behind me and I still have a red flakes and a glare. So it's a new week of dinners. Let's show you what we have left. So Saturday I showed you my fridge. We had tons of produce. This is all we have now. So we have this left over from the food pantry. They're just starting to get ripe, but they were really, sorry, they're really, really ripe. We're trying to let them get softer. We have one of these left. I dehydrated the cilantro and I dehydrated the cucumbers to make tzatziki. I'm really excited to try that. And then in my fridge. This is what we have going on for the fruits and vegetables. We have some of the lettuce left. We have some cabbage, bell pepper, a little bit of fresh cilantro. That's all we have for fruits in here. And look at how fast the fruits and vegetables get cleaned out at my house. That's why when I say, oh, we're super stocked, it goes really fast. These are the green beans. I need to do something with those. So that's how we're working. It looks like a lot, but it went pretty quick. So tonight for dinner, I asked my husband what he wanted. Now we're into the horrible lighting. And he said, like an Alfredo. We're gonna do a plate on the painter woman's fettuccine. So I have a pot of water going for pasta. And then this is kind of what, I don't look at her, this is what we're gonna do. I don't look at her recipe anymore. I kind of got it figured out. Um, this is what we have. So tonight for dinner, we're gonna do a play on Pioneer Woman's fettuccine, black pepper fettuccine. And I'm not gonna look at the recipe because I've made it enough times to kind of figure it out. So for the fettuccine sauce, you need, for hers, it's black pepper, mushrooms, um, Parmesan cheese, and heavy whipping cream. So that's all for the sauce. Then obviously we need pasta. This is from the food pantry. I'm gonna throw chicken in it. This is from the food pantry. I'm gonna cut this chicken breast in half and only use half for this dinner. I was thinking of, since I don't have fresh mushrooms, I have some frozen, but I'm gonna use more of this mushroom powder up and these were from the food pantry. I was going to do, zoom back around, broccoli in it, but I have this very sad amount of broccoli. So I'm thinking of adding maybe some bell pepper, and zucchini in. I have this little bit of zucchini left. And then I dehydrated these from the food pantry Saturday and I thought maybe it would give it like a sun-dried tomato-y taste. I'm not sure. And then I was gonna do a salad on the side. So what I don't use in the pasta, we're gonna put in there. I might even head back to the fridge. And then I should have made bread, but I did a little splurge and just brought half a loaf of sourdough for three dollars i don't know i don't have a starter i killed it i didn't realize you had to feed it so much so i killed it but let's see what we make from this and again we're only using half of this oh and i found these when i moved they're pine nuts i don't know when i bought them if they're still good if they're good i was thinking of toasting them up and so little update i didn't read and i did not get parmesan cheese i got this and it is sheep's cheese i just was looking at the price and thought oh cool four dollars um so it doesn't melt <laughs> like it should but we are gonna just make the best out of it i kept getting this weird whiff of Goat or sheep's cheese, and I was like, "What in the world is that gamey smell?" And it was me not reading. So this is not perfect. It's kind of chunky, but it's because the cheese. We have the little one's plate with her veggies. I did add cucumber to the salad because I remembered I had some. So it has cucumber, tomato, bell pepper, and then the pasta has broccoli, zucchini, and the dried tomatoes and the mushroom powder. Hello, it is Thursday, usually taco night, but we have things to use up. 
So tonight we are going to make a mozzarella tomato stuffed chicken with homemade mashed potatoes and green beans. We have these green beans, they're from the food pantry. We have my fingers right here. This is the other half of that chicken breast from last night and it is from the food pantry. We have these potatoes that I purchased, but we're gonna throw in a sweet potato and that is from the food pantry. I have part of this tomato from last night that is from that is homegrown and then I have some fresh basil that is from my basil that I'm growing obviously if it's mine these are breadcrumbs that I made that were extra bread from the food pantry that I just couldn't eat in time before they went bad so homemade breadcrumbs from the food pantry on the side we're gonna have a slice of toast that we splurged on yesterday it's the half of the half of a loaf that we purchased of sourdough so we can each have a slice of that and then this is my mozzarella cheese usually for this recipe I would use like a sliced I don't have a sliced but um, I'm not sure what happened to this shredded cheese so maybe we can just cut some off there's obviously a couple of more ingredients because we're gonna need to bread the chicken and there'll be salt and pepper and seasonings and stuff like that but this is the gist of what we're using. I was thinking maybe I could cook with you and show you how I'm gonna make this stuffed chicken. And I just hit record, and the monitor's next to me, and there's a baby crying because she knows I need to do something. So, this is life. This is life. I literally set everything up. I even found my meat hammer. And when we first moved in, I didn't know where my husband's tools were and I was trying to fix something and I used this and now there's holes in it. Don't tell anyone. Um, so we'll be back because I spent too long doing my hair because it looks like it's falling out. It is falling out and I look bald. And I spent too long trying to get it to not look bald. I've been trying to do no heat to make it healthier and then the 11 year old went to the bathroom and whoo, the 11 year old went to the bathroom and slammed the door and now the baby's awake. So we'll be back in a minute to cook some chicken together. I'm hoping that's good. So baby is good now. She's hanging out with her big sister. I took the time to spare your ears to hammer my chicken flat. So I split the chicken breast and then I put some wrap up on the top and I just hammered it kind of flatter out. Usually I'd make a couple smaller ones but because this is all the chicken I have we're just gonna make one big one and then I'll cut it up after it's cooked and we'll have a piece of it I don't need as much as my husband does obviously um, so this should be enough for one dinner so like I said oh I forgot spices so I'm not going to oh there's something sticky oh my gosh Is anybody else's life like this? Is it just me? Am I am I that unorganized? Okay, there was something sticky on the cabinet. My name is touching. So I'm not going to season this yet. I'm going to move this to the side, and we're going to be breading. So here are my breadcrumbs that I made in a bowl. I have some flour, and then in this bowl, I have mayonnaise and an egg. And this is kind of weird. We're the only ones eating this, or I totally wouldn't, um, this one. So it's egg and mayonnaise, and this is what we're going to use to coat it. The original recipe, I think, was just mayonnaise. So I have no idea who made this recipe. I have no idea where it came from. The first time that I made this, sorry, the first time I made this, I was probably 10. And I found it in a, in a magazine cookbook, I think, or at the library, I have no idea where I found it at. Um, so I can't credit whoever made it, and I don't even know if I make it like it used to be, or if it's completely different now. But I remember the original recipe, you just covered it in mayonnaise, and then you, you put it in the breadcrumbs. Well, we're, we're not 10 anymore. We've, we're three tens, almost four. So we are gonna do it our way, Sherman. One second. 
I swear, I, I look like the most frazzled person ever. And this is me with my life together pretty much. Okay, so we just mixed that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna season the flour and the breadcrumbs a little bit because we're dipping it. We're gonna dip it in the egg or the flour, the egg, the breadcrumbs, the egg, the breadcrumbs. We're gonna do a double. So we want all those layers nicely seasoned. This is onion powder, just a little bit. I'm not measuring, I'm just doing. This is garlic powder. <laughs> I just smell it because the words are off. I'm just doing a couple shakes. We're gonna do some white pepper. And just a little, this is very flavorful. You can use regular pepper too. I pulled out regular pepper. Um, but I love the taste of white pepper. Some thyme. And we are putting fresh basil inside of it. So it doesn't need to be super herb infused at this point. Some extra basil. Again, like three seconds shake three to four seconds of a shake. So it's not very much. And then, you know, we have to have some mint. Well, that's gonna be pretty minty. We'll just, we'll just skip the mint on the next step. I found a tripod, but it's not my normal one and the dog bumped it. So we had to stop and go again. Okay, so that's, the breadcrumbs, this is our, our mint flour, and we are just going to, instead of walking away and getting something that's a better size, we're just going to give this a mix up just to get those herbs in there, and I forgot salt, so a little bit of salt, a little bit of salt, just a pinch. Get the flour mixed up. Get our breadcrumbs mixed up. The short hair. You know the short hairs, they have to be in everything. Go on, guys. Go lay down. Go. It's raining outside, so they decided it would be a good time to go outside. Dig under the dog run and chase the chickens through the rain because. I don't have enough going on. So we have our chicken. We're gonna fill the inside. I'm just washing my hands because I forgot to grab a Q-tip. Not a Q-tip, that would be totally the wrong thing. I forgot to grab a toothpick to hold the chicken together. It tends to not stay together too well. So. I really did have a plan and then everything went crazy when the baby woke up so we are just going to cut pretty thin slices of tomato looks like maybe three if what the heck So, as much tomato as you would like or not like. We have our fresh basil. And I'm just gonna pull these off. The stem. And then we'll just give it a, a rough cut just to get those oils coming out.
doesn't have to be perfect at this point or ever really. If you don't want it to be perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so just rough cut that. We have our cheese. I'm gonna use that as a table. Now we're gonna bring our chicken back. And I am going to do just a little bit of salt and pepper on the inside. Literally just a really small pinch. And then you just put everything on one side. And this is where you can decide if you need more or less of an ingredient. Oh, look at that. Bowl's perfect. Okay, and then we're going to sprinkle our basil. My hands are wet with tomatoes, so they're sticking. short hairs have moved on to annoying my daughter because now she's calling him to get off the bed. When you hear the click clacking and then it's like a earthquake, it's my best friend Sherman over here who's hoping that I drop some of this chicken on the floor so he can have some. Have my sink filled with water just to make it easier. Okay. Again, my cheese is kind of weird. I don't know what happened to it. It's happened the last couple times I've bought in Costco cheese. It kind of just clumps all together. It comes in these two really big bags. And obviously we don't open both bags at the same time. So when I go to get the second bag out of the fridge downstairs, it always is like a big bowl okay that's that that's all we're doing again it's easier without shredded cheese but this is what i have let me wash my hands i don't want to dip my chicken hands in the toothpicks i'm gonna say i'm gonna take out five just to be safe And what you're going to do is you just want this to stay together as you dredge it slash give your family splinters, apparently, um, and cook it. So I kind of do it like almost like stitches that you can't see because I'm doing it on the opposite side. Let me flip my chicken. So I kind of stitch it together just to keep all that inside. Maybe that there is a better way to do this. I have no idea. This is how the recipe was when I was little and would make this. I would be so excited to, <laughs> to uh, when we had the ingredients to make it for my family because I felt so big and I, it was so easy but it looks so fancy when you're done okay. just gonna flip it over a lot of times you have a piece that's not quite the same size now it's not huge again I could probably make two of these and we would have enough but this is what we had left so this is what we're going to share for dinner. So we're going to go flour. Let me make this. We're going to cover it in flour. And remember when you go to eat it that you have toothpicks in there. Gonna give it a nice coating. Okay, 
are going to go into the egg wash. Using tongs is an optimal idea, but we're just going to go for it, okay? And honestly, sometimes I like to just get my hands in there because then I can really feel if there's anywhere missing. So that's covered. I'm going to go into our breadcrumbs. The only problem is that when you get to this stage, then you get breadcrumb hands. to make sure that you get every side. Every back, the sides. And honestly, this is coating pretty well, so I might skip the second dip. up the breadcrumbs and patting them on to make sure all the areas are covered. That is what that looks like. Let me wash my hands and grab the pan. For just doing the one, I'm just going to use a bread loaf pan. And I just put a little bit of, all, of olive oil at the bottom just to help it not stick. You're the brightest star in the sky. Thanks, Alexa. I'm the brightest star in the sky. So we're going to bake this for 425, at 425 for 13 to 18 minutes until it's 165 degrees. That's the best way to check your meat is with a thermometer. If you don't have one, you can cut it. Um, to see if it if it isn't pink anymore, you can push on it. If the juices are clear, then you're good. Let me move these out of the way. So I'm not going to cook this yet. It's only 2.45. We are just prepping for dinner and then we'll throw it all in and I'll show you that when we're done. We have that ready. I'm gonna cover it, put it in the fridge, and it'll actually help that breading stick. So I'm gonna just ring the door. Okay, this is just some water. I'm gonna put some salt in it, and we're gonna prep our potatoes for mashed potatoes. And I like to let mine sit for a little while in salt water to get out some of that starch. And I've broken way too many garbage disposals doing my potatoes in the sink. One of my hairs. And the chickens don't like him, so I always just shred them, not shred them, um, peel them into a plastic bag so I can just throw the bag right away. you like your mashed potatoes with the skin on or the skin off? Mm. Alexa's telling me that my package was just delivered. I had to buy a bigger car seat for the little one. She's getting to the point where she's going to need to go in a regular car seat, not an infant car seat. That's who rang the doorbell. I filmed a video taking you on my solo date with me so I didn't feel so alone uh, we went to Logan and they have a bunch of outlet stores they have a Pepperidge Farm one that has the Pepperidge Farm cookies and goldfish crackers sometimes some other stuff 
And then we went to this, it's, uh, it was like cheese and milk and ice cream. And I was super excited and I was talking to you the whole time. And then I realized that I walk way too fast and I'd never filmed in a store. So I was kind of nervous and I was filming, I was walking really fast as I was filming. So I decided that you would probably get seasick on the adventure with me. But just, just so you know, we did go on a date this week together. Shopping, shopping lunch date. We had a taco from the taco truck. We had a budget of $10 and we had a taco and then we went and got some goldfish crackers and some dairy products. Just in case you don't remember. Since I'm probably not gonna put it out. <laughs> I was editing it earlier during first nap and I was like, oof. I'm gonna make them sick. I'm never gonna come back. But in the video, I was talking about our backyard. And um, so our backyard is very overgrown. Uh, but we realized that at the top of the hill, there were some chairs. So my husband climbed through all the craziness and realized that it's flat up there. And the previous owners of this house, so we bought this house. I'm just gonna say it because People like to be detectives and can figure it out if they want to. Um, somehow, by the seriously, I, it was it was prayers, it was prayers and tears that we were able to buy a house, um, and that's one reason why we moved out from where we were too, is because Salt Lake's just way too expensive, and our rent was going up, and it was cheaper to buy a house, and. So that's what we did. I'm sure I'm going to hear comments about how, how can I be poor and buy a house. Well, either way, I have to pay mortgage or a house payment. So I would rather be putting that towards something that we can have forever and not have to worry about rent going so far up again that we can't afford it. But anyways, the previous homeowners, they did not care about this house at all. Let me just give these a quick rinse. They have the, I don't know, this feels like there's, even if you wash the potatoes, they're still good. So I'm just gonna chop these up and throw them in my water. Bing. So I can only work out there on nap time. Like I don't, if I can't even get out there. So a lot of times I prep dinner during nap and I'm like, I need, help out here. There's no way that I'm going to be able to do this. It's going to take me five years to get this backyard all cleaned up. It's like, I need some goats. If I just had a few goats, they could be out here eating all this stuff for me. And that would be so helpful. Tell me why someone, I, my fam, one of my family members knows someone with goats and she had two listed for sale but they weren't purchased yet. So she let me borrow them for two weeks. It could have been longer, but my neighbor called uh, animal control on me. And this is like the first month we lived here. So that was really fun. Um, she let me borrow her two goats. They were so stinking cute. I loved them so much. And they cleared away so much of the dead backyard. I was so grateful that she let me do that. It also made me realize I need to not have neighbors so close. Also, there's a four foot chain link fence that's half falling down in between us and the neighbors. So it's no personal space at all. These don't have to go in the water, the sweet potatoes, but I'm just gonna throw them in there so they're all together. thought I was insane when I suggested that we needed some goats to help us. But a lot of times he thinks most of my ideas are insane, so he's probably pretty used to it by this point. Okay. That's why I like peeling into a bag. You can go right into the garbage. So we have this prep now. These will sit till we're ready to boil them. I have my green beans, I had trimmed them all 
the day that we got them and cut off all the bad parts. So what I'll do when it's time is I will just throw these in the oven as well. So I'm gonna clean this up and I will see you in a couple hours when we finish making dinner. This is how the chicken turned out. I cut it. It's super oozy with all that yummy cheese in there. I probably should have let it sit for another minute or two, but we are starving. We're having dinner super late tonight. Let me plate it up and show you what's for dinner. And this is the final product. I added some leeks to the mashed potatoes, so that's why there's green in there. So there's sweet potato, leeks, and regular potatoes for the mashed potatoes. Then we have a salad with carrots, cucumbers, and bell pepper on it. And I put some cilantro in it. Then we have our chicken. You can see, I'll show you on that plate, some roasted green beans and some garlic bread that got a little bit left in there too long because I was doing too many things. But here's the chicken. So good. And that's what's for dinner. Hey, Sunday. Last night I didn't record anything. We were going to do pizza, but then my niece called and invited us over for some kind of like red beans and rice with sausage and shrimp in it. So we had that. And obviously I'm not going to record their food. <laughs> it's not part of what this is. But then last night I decided that tonight we're going to have the birria tacos for dinner or just very meat somehow so at like one in the morning I decided to throw a roast in and it has been cooking all night and this is what we're working with Ooh. so I didn't follow a recipe exactly I um watched this girl's video one second I watched a TikTok from the food pantry girl and kind of just did what she did but oh my gosh it's smelling so good i wish that you could smell this um so i'll show you what we finished doing with that later so i never came back and shared what that food looked like it was so good it cooked probably five more hours past what i showed you and then what you do is you dip your tortilla in the fat on the top you fry the tortilla, you put the meat, and you put cheese in it, and it's like a crispy taco with melted cheese, and you dip it in the in the consomme, the broth, and it's so good. I was having a very bad, not so good, oh, look at that, and that business right there, um, mental health night. The baby had not let me put her down all day. I was overwhelmed, overtouched, over it. I went and cried during dinner because I couldn't even eat dinner and I was starving. My stomach was growling and I was feeding the baby and I wanted to come have dinner and it was kind of ridiculous, but it was just one of those nights. We have those nights, mental health matters. So I wound up eating at like 10 o'clock after I got her to bed, but let me show you what it looks like. So it's been sitting in the fridge so you can see the fat on the top. Again, you want that fat because that's what fries up your tortilla. But it's just this shredded, amazing meat. And um, the the broth is what you dip your, your finished tacos in. Or you can put it in the ramen that we made. This is what the berry is called. It's B-I-R-R-I-A. It's kind of hard to say. I don't say it like authentic with an accent. But holy moly. It has tomatoes and chilies and onion garlic bell pepper the tomato bouillon it's just it's packed full of flavors this is gonna like we have literally eaten it every day as like in some form my husband just walks by when it was in the when it was in the crock pot he'd walk by with and grab a chip and dip it <laughs> dip it in there because he loves it um so it's a must try if you have if you have the ability to go get some Try it. It's so good.